Welcome to the Nick and Jimmy Show. On today's episode, we have Jonathan Schoenberg. Jonathan, welcome on the show. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Thank you for being here. So tell us, Jonathan, what's your story, how you got started, and uh, tell us more about yourself. I'm a strength and conditioning coach, uh, trainer. Uh, I was a, a wrestler on the, the national team here in Montreal under Victor Zilberman. Uh, had a few too many concussions and uh, decided uh, it was not for me. I wasn't going to make the Olympics, so uh, I decided to... Uh, I was going to start training people, uh, coaching people, went to school for it, and uh, just took off. So you used to be a wrestler? Yeah. Nice. Uh, that's where I started. I started as a, a wrestler at the Montreal Wrestling Club, and uh, my dream was to, to go to the Olympics. Uh, didn't work out, and uh, had to stop for a bit, but I wanted to stay in the fitness industry, so uh, uh, that's where it led to. And how long ago was this? Uh, in, uh, probably my last match was in 96, 97. 98 it's like 20 years ago yeah maybe maybe even maybe even less but uh definitely uh, it's it's been a while since i wrestled and why wrestling uh i like the the aspect of relying on yourself you know in team sports i played all the team sports uh, you always have to rely on you know teammates um you know something can go wrong with with a teammate or you know with with wrestling it's very individual it's very personal you have to train yourself uh, you can't blame anybody uh, everything is based on uh, how you train, your skill level. Uh, it's you against your opponent. Interesting, good. And doing right, right now, you have your own business called APC, right? Yeah, it's a it's a gym, um, Adrenaline Performance Center, and I'm just a you know the owner and coach. But very successful though. Um, on social media, there's a lot of uh, local um, success stories that go there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so talk to us a little bit about your business. Uh, it started off that it was a private gym. Uh, nobody was allowed uh, in other than my clients. Uh, and then uh, years back, many years back, I wanted to offer um, the gym experience that, that we offer to our clients to the general public, meaning you couldn't go into a gym and push sled, jump on boxes, train like an athlete. Uh, you'd have to be with a trainer or a company. My gym is open to the general public, but you can still train like an athlete. So you have all the equipment that an athlete would use you know, medicine balls, sleds, grass, uh, boxes, um, different technologies, but you can actually go there by yourself and use the gym without a private trainer. Interesting. All right, and how long have you been doing that, the APC? Uh, this one's been open eight years. Eight years? Yeah. That's and what's the difference between APC and other gyms? Um, you know, in, in from a community standpoint, it's it's very family oriented. Whereas we're very close, mm -hmm. it's close knit. We're not looking for a thousand members. Um, the classes are very unique. Uh, the equipment is very unique. Uh, you're training, you know, like an athlete, but also getting the benefits of someone who wants to look good aesthetically. It's 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 a very unique gym. Is it like CrossFit? What what do you guys teach uh, exactly? There's it's definitely not like CrossFit. Okay. With, you know, um, but um, it's like boot camp. Some of the classes are similar style, but you could go use the gym and train like a bodybuilder if you really wanted to, you know, have all the weights and the machines there, but mm. you also have access to um, stuff that I would train my professional hockey players with, um, the fighters, any kind of athlete, uh, or even a client who wants to train more athletically. Nice, and who, uh, who you're saying local professional hockey players, if you could name a few. Uh, I've been training Chris Letang for eight years now, Jacob Voracek of the Flyers, uh, Mike Matheson trains with me. Uh, we, we have, you know, I could, we have tons. We have Daniel Sprung, the young kid coming up now, uh, uh, is with Anaheim. Uh, we, we have a million, uh, you know, young hockey players that have been with us for a long time. Awesome. And do you have other trainers that work in your business or it's only you? No, it's, it's, we have other trainers that work there. Um, you know, the gym was started by me, but we've, we've brought in a, a bunch of um, coaches and you trainers. You leverage yourself. 
Yeah, well, the, the, the thing with the, the gym is that um, I need to trust the, the staff that's, that's behind me. Of so course. we're not letting in uh, 10 million trainers. We want them to actually have a, a style of training that we can trust and that we can believe in and uh, where the results actually speak for, them, for themselves. And Jonathan, obviously you're in tip-top shape. How do you do it, man? Like every day you work out, like it, it must be a lot of discipline to have what you have. Um, you know, when I when I wrestled, uh, because I took it up so late in life, I needed to work harder than everybody else because my skill level at, at the time that I took it up was not as good as, you know, some of the Russians. So I needed to work harder in the gym. Uh, so I've always had that discipline. So you know, working out is, is not really a, a huge thing. The, the diet for me is, is, a, is a bit harder to follow, but, you know, it's just years and years of grooving yourself into a pattern and, and hopefully, you know, you're, you're benefiting from years and years of training. Mm -hmm. So do you believe uh, daily activity is important? Doing something every single day? Doing something, moving at least every moving. single day. You know, it's good whether it, it means going for it. Depends what your, your goals are. You know, if you want to be... Uh, shredded and, and, and look amazing you, you know you have to you have to train a certain way and you have to eat a certain way if your if your goal is just to be healthy and to uh, have a better quality of life and enjoy time with your kids then you don't have to be so crazy about your training but you have to do something you know walk around the block uh, you, you, there's there's always something you can got to move yeah yeah the 80 20 rule do you believe in it do you think it's it's quite accurate 80 percent food 20 percent working out I, I actually don't but um it's only because my my food is not as as good as it should be, and I can still maintain a, a you know a you know a decent physique it's because I train hard, and I, I know that when I'm training harder, I can allow myself to cheat a bit more, and when I'm training less hard, I have to be more stringent with my diet. So, do you uh, eat really well six days a week, and then one day a week you cheat, or how does that work? I, I sort of don't try and put a, a limit on. Uh, how I diet. I okay. try and I try and make it be a lifestyle. I know the exactly. foods that I, I like eating. I try and uh, keep my my home and my fridge filled with those foods. Mm -hmm. And then if I go um, off track, I just try and bounce back as fast as I can. So I know what my cheats are going to be because I don't really eat. I'm not a fried food guy. I don't eat French fries. I don't eat pizza. So I know where I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat with sushi. I'm going to cheat with, you know, bread. If I go to a a restaurant and uh, I'm hungry, like those are the 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 places where I know I'm gonna let myself go off track. So once I fall off track, I know I have to bounce back right away. And if somebody wants to lose weight, what's, <clears throat> what are a few things that they sh should stay away from? Like French fries, um, bread, carbs, what's your advice? Yeah, I mean, anything fried is, is never a great option. Any carb that is not gonna really do you any good, uh, like a, a white bread or, you know, it's yeah if they're, if they're not gonna if they're not gonna fuel you in a certain way and they're not gonna do anything for your body high starches you know if you're gonna have carbs at least you know quinoa brown rice you know it's not you know sweet potatoes if you want but you can there's there's definitely ways you can eat carbs and mm -hmm. and them not be bad carbs for you how about the keto diet it's very uh the keto diet keto diet i, I don't actually don't believe in any diets oh. i believe in i believe in having a lifestyle mm -hmm. And try to follow. Because diet is temporary. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you have a if you have a wedding coming up in in two months, you need to get in shape. That's one thing. You can you can cut your carbs, lower your carbs, eat more protein, change your exercise, but understand that at some point in your life, you're going to bounce back to whatever you're eating before. Exactly. So unless you're willing sure. to make a lifestyle change, then dieting is useless. So let's talk about mindset. How important, in your opinion, is to have the right mindset? Like ninety percent 90 of success is mindset, right? Yeah, and it's it's basically getting yourself in a, in a in a state of mind where where you're gonna stick to something and follow it, whether it's waking up in the morning every day at five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. whether it's making sure you train five days a week, whether it's not eating uh, having bread in your house. It's everything is is uh, it's your mind that's gonna tell you 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 need to eat the bread or you you have to stay in bed and you can't get up or you're not gonna go to the gym. That's right. Is there any days that you just want to quit? Um, just like, man, I, I just need, I need some time, whatever. I don't know. Just to quit. You're done. There, there's days where it's very tough, but I think what, what, what's helped me along the way is, is my discipline in the fact that I've been doing it so long. Uh, just let's say waking up in the morning, 
I'm brutally sick now. So waking up in the morning would have been very hard today. It, it was hard today, but I've been waking up in the morning, every morning, five o'clock in the morning for the last X amount of years that getting up is just a habit. Mm -hmm. So when you create habits, it's, you don't quit a habit. You quit something that's, that's something tough that you just start off. People quit the gym if they're starting off and it's too hard because they're not used to it. But if you, if it becomes a habit and you do it every day or you do it X amount of times a week, mm -hmm. it, it can be hard to quit because you're, you're, you're just moved into doing it. And what are a couple of tips that you could share to us, even every, everybody watching this video, on how to perfect those habits, on how to be waking up 5 a.m. and so on and so on. Obviously, if somebody's waking up at 10 a.m. every morning, it's very hard overnight from 10 to 5, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if that's the case, if waking up's the key, then, you know, try three days a week waking up a bit earlier. Set your alarm, wake up earlier, go to the gym, or figure an activity you're going to do at that time of the day. If it's diet... Get a calendar. Every time you eat well, put a line through one direction. Every time you go to the gym, put a line through the other direction. Mm -hmm. You should have X amount of X's per week. So let's say you want to, your goal is to be in shape for a, an event or a, a wedding, a, whatever your, your, your goal is. You should know that you, you should have X amount of X's per week. And the other days you should at least have a line through. It means if I don't work out, I better eat well. If I work out, then I maybe can allow myself two days a week where I can, hmm. you know, go off uh, mm -hmm. and see how many X's you can get a week. Make it a game for yourself. <coughs> and do you have a, a daily routine? Like a ritual? You know, I work so much that um, my routine is I'm up every morning at max five. I, uh, max five? Max. So you would you can even wake up earlier than that? Yeah, depends on how I'm going to work. You know, if I, if I have a client at five, then I'm going to have to be up at four something. Wow. And... Um, so I make sure I'm at the gym working. I usually, I, I don't, I fill up my mornings at least till, till noon. And then I can sort of play with, sometimes I can go uh, eat something, uh, take a power nap. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm back at the gym at let's say 3.30. So I have that window to play with. Do I train from anywhere from 12 to 3.30, allowing that I'm gonna eat? Or do I make sure I go rest because I didn't sleep all the night before and make sure I train at night? Because then I'm working from, let's say, 3.30 to, let's say, 6.37. So I have that window. I always make sure I want to get a workout in. Uh, every day, get in the, in the mindset that I'm going to train. If I don't train, I got to make it up the next day and, and, and maybe push myself a bit harder. But I don't want to go too many days without training mm. and too many days without eating unhealthy. And you, you wake up maximum five. Does that mean you have to go sleep a lot earlier than normal? Like, I mean, what, do you, what time do you go to bed? 10, 11? 10, 11. 10, 11. Yeah, Hopefully, if, if things are, are good, you know, you, the days I have my uh, kids, it's tough because uh, the, um, you know, depending on how they're sleeping, they'll wake up in the middle of the night and, you know, you, your focus is on them. But Max, uh, you know, I try not to go to sleep past 11, especially if I'm up at that hour. And if I do fall asleep past that hour, I don't sleep well during the night, then I know that next day during my window, I should take a power nap and make sure I'm fresh for my, my clients and my training later on in the day. Good. And you do a lot of uh, giving back events. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that. Mon spread the Love Montreal, right? Yeah, we have Spread the Love Montreal. We do a lot of charity events, uh, uh, you know, per, per year. I try and do a, a, a few circuits at the gym where, you know, a friend of mine's father died of cancer. So we had an event for him. We raised a lot of money for, you know, the Jock Colson Foundation. Um, we did something else for um, uh, the Cure Foundation. Uh, Spread the Love Montreal was something developed by uh, Sateri Malka. It's basically um, just she she got out and she started passing out, you know, uh, care packages for the homeless. And it just took off. And now uh, today we'll be, you know, um, uh, going to the Old Mission Brewery and, and uh, giving them the haircuts. That's nice. um, you know, 10, 10 barbers and hairdressers donate their time. We give them care packages with hats, gloves, socks, uh, neck warmers, food. And it's really a great cause. Good. And who founded that? That was you? No, Sateri Malka. Sateri Malka. And it just so happened that what she was doing, and she was she would make these packages at her home, and she'd drive around and give them out to if she saw homeless. And when she told me about it, I said, it's very unsafe for you to go. Uh, she would, you know, you have a, a, a young, you know, beautiful woman uh, in a Tesla going to hand out. You know, you're not going to go in a, out on the street and just get out of your car and hand out uh, care packages mm. to people, you know, she's giving out coats to, 
to, to a lot of people. I said, let me go with you and, and I'll go hand them out for you. And then it just, I fell in love with it and we started doing it. Um, my girlfriend Maddie does it, you know, her husband does it. It's, and it's just gained so much ground at the, um, at the, uh, at the gym that everybody donates their time. Mm -hmm. uh, people donate, you know, they'll, they'll come in with hundreds of dollars with the Tim Hortons cards. We give them out, it's, it's a nice cause. Good. Well, we have a little box waiting for you guys. That's very nice of you, thank you very much. You're it's welcome. always good to give back. Uh, they say in order to receive, always give first, give, 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 and without the expectation of receiving. Yeah, 100%, it's yeah. good karma too. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And what, do you have a, like a life purpose, a, a goal that's bigger than yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, now that, I, that I've reached this age where, you know, I've, I've established my career, um, the, the industry that I'm in is, is helping people, you know, better their lives. So once you've helped X amount of people either change the way their body looks, uh, change their fitness goals, change their health, um, I think that's was my life purpose is, is changing people's, you know, not just their physical state, but their emotional state changes when they train. And their mindset too. Yeah. So uh, that, taking care of my kids and making sure they, they, uh, they grow up to be good people is the most important thing right now. Where you are today, 10 plus years ago, <clears throat> or eight years ago when you opened up APC, did you, I don't know if you believe in law of attraction, did you believe that you're going to be where you are today? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think just So you visualized on, it and everything, right? You know, I, I, I don't know if I visualized it, but I knew that if I worked hard enough and I stuck to the game plan and um, I did what I had to do, that, that things would work out. I just had that, that belief. Good. And what inspires you? Um, what drives you to get better and better and better? Just being the best at, at what I do. I don't like uh, my, my competitiveness from wrestling and from sport, you know, I guess transferred into whatever, whatever I do in life. I, I never like being number two, even if mm -hmm. I'm playing Scrabble with someone, I don't want to lose to them. So you don't like comparing yourself, but you like competing. Uh, I don't know about comparing myself, but I, I, I want to be the best at what I do. That's right. It's for other people to, to judge, but I definitely want to be one of the best and, and considered, you know, I always want to get better. I don't want to be a stagnant. I always want to keep it. working on, on, you know, if I'm not, not the best right now, I want to be the best in a year from now. And how do you get better? How, do, how can you improve your skill set in doing what you're doing? Just keep learning and just keep figuring out the, the human body and, and uh, what people are doing around the world and what's working, what's not working. You know, you have to have your mentors. So even though you're established, you still have to have people you look up to and Absolutely. you trust. So you, you get their feedback and, uh, you know, just my, my system is a system of all these other derivatives where people are doing things in South America and Europe and the US and I take what I, I think works and I apply it to my own system and, and that's how it grows. Good, and you're talking about mentors, who are your mentors? You have any? Um, you know, growing up, I would say, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Boyle and, and Mark Verstegen were, were two of the, the, the top guys when I was coming up. And um, just because they, they made it not so complicated, you know, with, with functional training, a lot of people try and overcomplicate things. And they simplified it and they had a, a system that worked for them. And uh, it, it was a good base uh, to learn from. And from there, you know, I've, there, there's a lot of other people out there that, uh, that I've taken from, but th those were probably two when I first started that were the tops. Do you read any books? Yeah. All any the time. like motivational books to have your mind right? I try and uh, I try and more read online. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, not. I'm not a, a book guy. Audible. More, yeah. Yeah. I'm more a. I'm more a, a reader online, or a, I should actually read more books. I, I read when I'm, let's say, traveling or on a plane or. Or on the beach. Yeah, I, I, I can't sit still. I have a, have a tough time sitting still, and not doing anything. So. Maybe you have ADD like us. Maybe. <laughs> maybe a slight case. <laughs> Tell us about the, your upbringing, your childhood. Um, I was, uh, my parents were divorced at a, at a young age, let's say 10. Uh, I went to go live with my grandparents at maybe 13 years old. Born and raised in Montreal, right? Yeah. And uh, I went to go live with my grandparents. I, uh, you know, they, they sort of set me straight on a, on a good path. And uh, from there, just by chance, you know, I picked up wrestling at a, at a high school. And... I picked it up so late, but it, 
you know, it just found something I was really good at very fast. I uh, went right to uh, the Montreal Wrestling Club, which was, you know, the national training center at that point. And uh, I had good mentors. You know, Vic Victor Zilberman, I think, would be the biggest mentor I've ever had. Victor who was right? Zilberman. He was actually the, 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 the coach of the team. Sounds familiar. Yeah, national team coach. Uh, he, he's the, the head coach of the Y and the Montreal Wrestling Club no. forever. And he was a guy who basically... Um, I guess at the years when I was wrestling, I didn't have you know a father figure back then. So he was the guy I would see three times a day. Um, very harsh, wouldn't wouldn't uh, hold back, which is sort of maybe why I'm 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 the same way uh, with the way I, I speak to people. And but he, he doesn't hold back any punches. He's very truthful, and um, he's not fake. So he Keeps tells it real. yeah he doesn't tell you what you want to hear all the time, but uh, he he tells you what's right and. Uh, you know, waking up in the morning to go morning practice, um, looking for his approval. It was, it was, he was a very important person in my life to grow up. And then from there, you know, luckily I, I trained the, the national team as my first, let's say, um, I wouldn't say high profile athletes, but they were the first real athletes that I trained, members of the national team, just because I had that attachment with them. And then from there, you know, George St. Pierre, because he, you know, uh, he, he had that mixed martial arts background and, and I was a wrestler. It was a good, good uh, attraction. Um, and then it just took off from there and, and uh, trained a lot of athletes through there. But at, at that point, my, I was already training the general public at the, at the, at the Y. So at least I, I was working on both sides. I had my clientele, I had my athletes. So I never relied on either one of them. And were you ever bullied as a kid? Um, no, good question. I was never bullied. Thank what God. do you think about bullying? Well, it's, it's not the greatest. Uh, that's why it's good to have. Uh, I teach my my kids to be able to stand up for themselves. Good. I always stood up for myself, and uh, once you stand up to a bully, uh, they they back down right away. Bullies are cowards. I like that. Bullies are cowards. It's true. Yeah. They're insecure people inside that they just want to pick on other people. Exactly. Yeah. So for everybody watching this video that want to be in shape or want to be an entrepreneur, what's your advice? to them? Um, just be disciplined. And you know, my father would told me, uh, patrol your own wing. So don't, don't try and, um, you know, worry yourself with things that you can't control. You know, control what you have to control, work on getting better. Um, it, it takes years, it takes years and years and years. And you, you, you're going to get sidetracked and things are going to go wrong and you're going to fail many, many, many times. But it's the people who actually fail and they don't give up that are the big successes in life. So you're going to get derailed. I've failed 10 million times. Of course. And things go wrong and, and you're going to get depressed. And, but it's the people who are actually able to focus mm -hmm. on not letting it deter you and, and, and <clears throat> keep plowing through. Because in this day and age, people are, are handed way too much. Yeah. And those people are not going to succeed because they, they don't know what it's like to actually work hard. You have the silver spoon. Yeah. No. What's your definition of success? Well, success is being comfortable with yourself. Everybody has a different mm. version of what their, their success stories are. I don't, I don't feel like I'm a success yet because I still have a lot to accomplish. But people are, you know, there's, there's people who are happy working nine to five and they want to work five days a week, take their weekends off, enjoy time with their family. And that's, that's a success story. There's other people whose success is defined by how much money they can make a year. There's other people who are success are defined by the title they have at their, their job. In fitness, you know, if they have a six pack, that's a success. You know, everybody has their own different successes. It's what, it's what your own success is, what drives you and what makes you comfortable with yourself. Yeah. If you're comfortable in your own skin and, and you're a success rate to yourself, that's all that's important. Absolutely. I, I love that answer. So it's about the only person you have to compare yourself is to yourself. Yeah, <clears throat> whatever makes you, don't don't compare yourself to, someone, to to another person. If you feel successful and you feel like you you're you're doing a good job and you're That's a good right. parent and you're you're good at your work, it doesn't matter what your your monetary value says as long as it doesn't bother you. Exactly. No, like we said earlier, don't compare yourself with others, but you could compete. Yeah. You know, why not? Uh, any questions? Actually, I have a um, yeah, uh, for because you're very big on social media. Has social media helped you out with your business? Mm. I'm actually not as good as I should be on social media. I only started recently trying to work on it a bit better, but 
I know a lot of trainers who are horrible, but are great on social media and they're very successful um, monetarily, you know, building their business. So it's very important to some people. I wish I was better at it a long time ago and it's very, it, it is a very important tool. I'm trying to get a lot better at it. Um, but it, it's very, I wish I was, I was more um, prominent on, you know, Instagram, Facebook. I don't even use my Facebook. I uh, use Instagram, Instagram now. I try and focus on Instagram because that's, I just don't have enough time. And I wish I was better. I think I might even hire someone just to do my, my, uh, my social media work because it is so important. Mm. Good. But uh, first time we meet, <clears throat> congratulations, man, on doing what you do. We heard a lot about you. Uh, great things. Not the bad thing, but the great things. You should be proud of yourself. That's for sure. Keep on doing what you're doing. What's your opinion on performance enhancements? The drugs, you mean? Yeah, performance apps. Um, I'm obviously not a believer in them. Um, depending on what you're, 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 are you talking about steroids? Are you talking about, you know, it all depends on what level you're, if you're just talking about creatine and, you know, whatever is making the person happy. If it's bad for your health, then it's not good for you. So mm -hmm. we're talking about steroids and, and uh, G8. SARMs? Um, I, I don't know enough about SARMs. I know someone who, who takes them, who, you know, he's, he's seen results on them, but I don't know how healthy it is for you. So I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, wouldn't take SARMs myself or creatine, but I know a lot of people do and um, it's just not for me. But, uh, but if it works for you and, it, and it's not uh, a detriment to your health, go ahead. Do you take any supplements or? I'm, I'm not good with supplements. I'm, I'm, uh, I may take a shake here or there, but I'm not the type of person who walks around with a shaker bottle and I need to have protein after my... Uh, Would you recommend it? The, the, the protein after workout, yes. Okay. So, How about so, meal replacement as a protein? Meal replacement as a protein. I'd rather just someone eat a meal. Okay. And if you can't eat a meal, then, then have a meal replacement. But I, so, I'd rather uh, people get all their, their supplementation from actual real food. Mm. And, um, you know, if, if you need to, to, to get whey protein or, or vega protein or whatever is good mm -hmm. for, for you, go ahead after a workout. It's not bad. If you're not, if you're not getting from food, get it from somewhere else. Perfect. So if somebody wants to follow you on social media, on Instagram, how can they follow you? Uh, John J O N Chamberg, uh, is my Instagram and APC. I think, I, I think it's adrenaline performance center has its own Instagram page. If you want to see what's going on at the gym. And if somebody wants to, you know, can you work privately with people? Like let's yeah. say, yeah, uh -huh. I mean, they're better off. They're better off contacting me or the gym. And from there I'll see what you're, You know, I'm not going to put it, it, I wouldn't put a beginner with me or I wouldn't put someone who's just there to get a workout and is worrying about, you know, being on a budget because mm -hmm. they're, they're just paying for, I would actually put them with one of my trainers and, uh, you know, make sure they're, they're progressing at a good rate. And, and once they, they learn their body and they, they feel good about themselves mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're more than welcome. So if it's when you're saying somebody shouldn't worry about the budget in that case, How much are we looking at roughly? Um, for myself or for another private trainer? yourself? For myself, it starts at hundred dollars an hour, and then depending on, uh, it doesn't really depend on anything. I mean, if you're training with another one of the trainers, it could be anywhere from sixty, you know, fifty to hundred dollars an hour. I don't know what you'd have to deal with each one of the trainers individually, but uh, you know, everybody's different, and the classes are a bit different. So classes are probably around twenty-five dollars an hour. So depending on your budget and what your goals are, that that's what you'd, you'd go with. So I know Nick earlier, he asked, why should somebody pick your gym versus the other? We already answered that, but let's ask you this. Why should somebody pick you versus another personal trainer? You know what? It's all personal. It's all depending on what the person wants. And uh, I know some people just want to go to the gym, walk around and, and talk with their trainer and, 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 and socialize, but they'll get a bit of a workout. But that's the best that that's what's good for them. Mm. So some people don't want to be in crazy shape. Some people don't want to go to the gym and work hard. They want to work just enough, but it's, it's healthy for them to move. It's, it's better than the option of doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So for them, I'd say I'm not the right option. I, I wouldn't take those clients, but they're more than welcome to come to the gym. I'm, I'm sure. So what clients do you take? People are serious about results and um, they, they know that we're not going to mess around for the, the hour that they're with me. And, um, They, they want to work hard. They want to, they're good people that we're not going to, you know, put anybody yeah, yeah. down during our, our sessions or, or, or talk, uh, 
talk shit about people. You know, we're gonna we're gonna work on getting you better in the gym, and uh, that's it. Awesome. Perfect. Now, as a father with two kids, uh, I'm a new father. I have a 10 month old. Um, let's say in the near future to put him in, you know, not to be an athlete, but for him to be in shape and get that habit. At what age do you recommend for him to, you know, play soccer or whatever the case is, football, whatever? Right away. Put, put him in, in sports as, as young as they can be. What's young? You're up in three, two? Whatever it is that when the time a comes. program. Whether it means at two years old, bringing them to a, a park and, and playing soccer with them to playing a team sport or, or, or an organized sport. You can't go wrong with sports or going to a park or you, you know, the, the difference between now and, and when I was growing up is when I was growing up, we were able to go play outside on the street and, 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 That's right. and play hockey on the street, you know, ball hockey. We were able to take our bikes to the park and stay out all day. And we got more exercise uh, now. This, this day and age that people are on the computers, people on their, their mm -hmm. Game Boys or their, their whatever it is, and they're you know a bit more sedentary. They're not working out as much. Mm -hmm. They're not playing sports. So the kids suffer a lot. So for them, get them in as many sports as they can. Mm -hmm. It's not about just let them learn their bodies, let them move. When you're young, you shouldn't be on a diet. You should be eating properly. You shouldn't be working out you know, to get better at your sport. You should be playing your sport. The rest will take care of itself. And later on in life, if you learn your path and you know where you want to go and you're a great hockey player, you're a great football player and and you know that that you're above, you know, you're in that one percent of the, the population that has a chance to, to go on further, then you start training. Then you start, you know, yeah. working on a, on, a, on a program yeah. for yourself. But learn your body. Play as many sports as you can. That's how you get better. Good, Good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching the Nick and Jimmy show. And thank you to John for being on our show. We thank appreciate you. you. If you like this content and want to see more videos just like John's story, uh, don't be shy to watch on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, The Naked Jimmy Show. Thank you very much. And follow Jonathan Chambers.